He loves us unconditionally. But every one of his blessings is attached to a condition. You got to pass the test to get to the other side. And many times, ooh, I feel it now. Many times when you ask God for something, uh -huh. the first thing he does is he trains you with trouble. <laughs> I'm training you with trouble to see how you're going to act on the other side of the trouble. My if God. you have the spiritual, good God Almighty, capacity uh -huh. to receive what you just asked for. God bless you. God keep you. And we appreciate you all being here tonight. Let's d dive into this word because I feel like there's a lot that needs to be discussed. And I also believe that there's a word here for you, each and every last one of you. God has a way of, of streamlining the word particular and specific for each person. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Question number one. Let's dive right in. How do we maximize life's broken situations? Mm. How do we maximize life's broken situations? My God. First Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 13. I'm going to read it in two parts because it's so long. I can't get the whole thing on the screen. And it says, there have no temptation taken you. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. I, I want you to really get that. God is not, God is faithful. That means God will not allow you to be to suffer that which you cannot handle. So you hear people saying all the time, God will never put more on you than you can handle. I, I, I don't want to get too far into that, but it, it, this is what the verse says. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that? which ye are able. Uh -huh. The second part of that says, but will with the temptation also also make a way to escape yes. that you may be able to bear it. To bear it. That's and it. we say all the time, I'm going to be a little contradictory because that's just who I am sometimes. We say all the time that God would never put more on you than you can handle. Uh -huh. if, if that's not 100% accurate, that's just a term that most people come up with. Because if, if, if that was not the case, we would need psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. We would need a lawyer. Mm -hmm. We would need loans. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'd be buying our homes with cash. Mm -hmm. We'd be buying our cars with cash. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's multiple different ways you can look at that. When something goes wrong in your body, you got to go run to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, that shows you it's too much for you. Go out and get some help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When your marriage gets on the rocks, you might be pretty stable in your marriage, but somebody else needs to look at it from the outside looking in right. so that they can give you a different perspective. Right. Because right. people are hard-hearted at times, uh -huh. and many times people refuse to forgive. Right. I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> but how, how do we maximize life's broken moments? Yes. We, we have to dive into that mm -hmm. because there's many times in life where the bottom is going to fall out. Right. Think about that just for a moment. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself picking up the pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You find yourself picking up the pieces. Yes. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. You're right. You're right. So you got to understand something. Being a Christian and accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior does not give you a free pass. Right. It does not exempt you from pain. It does not qualify you to just miss out on trouble. Uh, come on. Uh, trouble comes knocking on your door from time to time. But you have to understand, because of the God that we serve, that broken times and broken situations do not last forever. Amen. They are only momentary. Uh -huh. And that's why we've developed another saying that's popular now. Let us not make a permanent decision mm -hmm. based on a temporary pain, That's right. based on a temporary yes. situation, on, based on a momentary circumstance, yes. based on something that you can outlive, based on something that you can put your faith on. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
and then send your faith to answer when you are too afraid to open up the mail. Send your faith to answer when you're too afraid to pick up the phone. Send your faith to answer when you feel a little knot in your stomach because you got another piece of mail from the courthouse. My God, my God. That's good, Pastor. You got to develop a vision that looks past on, the trouble that's key. That's key. that you're going on right now. So key. You got to see beyond the problem. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, also, God will provide a way of yes. escape. Yes. I am enjoying this topic right now, y'all, because he's asking, how do we ma maximize life broken situations? And the first thing I found about is that we got to go back and re-examine it, right? We got to re-examine uh, examine ourselves. That's right. See, what's going on? What's happening? Why are we at this, this place in our life where we're feeling broken? And the scripture that he gave is 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And what I like about it, it says, because there have no temptation uh, taken you, but such is common to man, yeah. but God is faithful and if we can always understand that in every situation but god that's right every time something come up but god god is yes. faithful and so yes. we can maximize those moments and sometimes you have to steal away yes. um one one person who i'm thinking of right now in the bible was elijah with the j mm -hmm. and he was in first kings and i wrote that down on tonight ninth the 19th chapter and the fourth verse and and he got away because he was tired of always going to people and, and, and proclaiming the good news of the Lord because Jesus hasn't came on the scene yet and God had certain assignments for him to do. But it got to the point to where people were after him and wanted to kill him. They had a warrant out for his arrest, for his death. And so he went and hid himself in a cave right. under a, ju a Jupiter tree. Jennifer. And, and when the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And when the angel of the Lord came to here and said, what's going on, Elijah? Why are you here? He just said, enough is enough. He said, enough. He said just take my life. Yeah. You know, and, and literally he yeah. said that word. It is enough. It is enough. Just, Lord, take away my life. And at that point, you know, you will realize, man, Elijah, after everything that you've done for God and after all the miracles that God has shown you, and now you sit here in a, in a mode of depression. And how many know we all been there? Uh -huh. yeah. We all been there. Mode of depression. Some people it has even had suicidal ideations. They've had all type of issues go on in their mind. But God had to come and encourage him. But it took him still in a way. Because yeah. sometimes we're so busy doing the work of the Lord that we forget about the Lord of the work. work. And so yes. we have to sometimes still away and say, God, Lord, I'm re-examining myself. Lord, if you see anything in me that's not like you, take, take it, it out, out, God. Take it out, God, because I need you, God. I need to be more like you, God. So help me, God, to maximize this brokenness, these broken situations. God, you can handle it. God is faithful. He is faithful, glory to God. He sees us when we get in it and he sees us when we get out. He knows how to get us out, saints of God. It's just that meantime of waiting on the Lord. But while you're waiting, be careful how you wait. Amen. Let's let's make a conscious decision that I'm going to wait and I'm going to keep praising God. Amen. I'm going to wait and I'm going to keep reading my word, glory Amen. to God. I'm going to keep giving my tithes. I'm going to keep giving my offering, no matter how bad the pain is, Lord, yes. because I am yours, God. And I believe, oh God, that if I hold on, that after a while, glory to God. How many know after a while, God will come through? Hallelujah. We all been in some Amen. situations where we wonder, God, when are you coming? Are you coming? Lord, how long, much more do I, can <laughs> I take of this? How much more can I bear? But I believe watch. Wait, wait on the Lord. But God knows how much we can bear. He weighs our shoulders and just makes sure it's enough that, they're, okay, Simon, your shoulders can handle it. Okay, Shirley, your, sh your, your shoulders can handle it. Deacon, your shoulders can handle it. Okay, and, and it feels like, no, this is going to take me out. But God knows. Yes. Because he's not going to put much on you. Glory to God. Go ahead, Pastor, because I'll keep going. <laughs> Woo. Why do people commit suicide? Mm, Jesus. Let's think about that. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, many people, I was going to put a percentage on it, but <laughs> I don't know if I want to put a percentage on that. I could guess and say 95% of the people in the world have contemplated suicide at least once in their life. I don't know how many people, but we know that we all have, it's, it's, it's glanced across our mind at some given point in time. And you give in to it or you don't. But why do people commit suicide? Think about this. <laughs> Some people say no more. Some people say I'm giving all I can give. Some people say I just don't want to be here anymore. Some people say I'm at my wits end. Some people say I just can't take it anymore. You know. But let's let's be let's have some realization here. Nobody necessarily wants to end their life. Right, right. 
You just want your pain to stop. Right. That's good. That's you just want your pain to stop. You just want your pain to stop. Because yes. think about it like this. For anybody who's ever contemplated suicide, what if you remove the one thing that made you contemplate suicide? You begin loving life, fresh and anew. That's right. Fresh like the morning dew that drops in the morning when, when the moisture settles down on the grass. Your life would be refreshed. Your mind would be rejuvenated. Yes, yes. And, and the anxiety that you felt would cause you to change because it's not there anymore. Yes. What you felt is gone. Uh huh. Now you have to ask yourself, why would I even think like that? My God. You look at it from a different perspective now. Because understand this many people stop planning, stop dreaming, stop hoping uh -huh. because you feel pain. Uh huh. Come on. Or you feel like you're lost. Uh huh. Or right. you feel like you have lost something. Right. Uh huh. But this is the place where we should immerse ourselves into the protection of planning for the future. Mm -hmm. And you say, how do you do that? Take action. Take action. That's right. I, I preached about it Sunday that just passed. Take action. That the antidote to anxiety is action. Uh huh. So you got to take. Action. Get busy doing the stuff that causes you to be happy, that causes you right. to, 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 to push. Go to that happy place. You know, yes. Right. You got to go find your happy place. Find yes. your heavenly place. There's yes. a thought process that causes you to be rejuvenated uh -huh. because you got to understand something. Church is a building, a place that we go, mm -hmm. but the, the real church is us. It's us. Yes, yes. That's why God put the church in place of Satan mm -hmm. as his main praise and worship. Uh -huh. This is why Satan doesn't like the church. He cares nothing about the building. He cares about you. Yes. So he attacks you. He doesn't want your car. He just wants to get you off your game. Right. He doesn't right. want your relationship. He just wants you not to believe and trust in God. Right. He doesn't want your job. He just wants you to doubt God. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And instead of running to God and running to church and doing ministry and getting busy, people run from God. Come on. At a time where you got to remember, church is where we go. Uh huh. It's a building. The building is where we but go. But the real Come on. church uh -huh. is me. Hello, friends. My name is Mervyn, and I'm a product developer with a brand new patent pending invention. Check this out. Positive memories are timeless treasures that live within our heart. Would you like to make a lifelong memory of your loved ones while they're still alive? That's right. You can have access to a long lasting memory right at your fingertips. With our customized personal gift boxes, we specialize in the preservation of unforgettable moments, which are always at your fingertips. We will help you pandemic-proof your memories. Visit us today at aforevermemory.com and make a memory that will last forever. <laughs> Why or when is it necessary to sow a financial seed? Now we're talking about dealing with pain. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We're talking about looking for a breakthrough. Yes. And let me preface it with this. If the only time some people call on God is when trouble shows up, mm -hmm. none of this works for you. That's right. None of this works. Mm -hmm. Because God will not allow you to, to be successful and unrighteous right. at the same time. Right. That's good, Pastor. That's good. I feel the spirit of repeat on that. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father will not allow any of us to be unrighteous and successful uh -huh. at the same time if we declare ourselves as Christians. Uh -huh. Now, there's people out there that could care less about calling themselves a Christian. And you're trying to say, well, that, that's not true. It is true. They're not Christians. Mm -hmm. They can be unrighteous. Yeah. They can be successful at the same time. Uh -huh. But not us. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. We are not allowed to follow the good book uh -huh. and 
live unrighteously uh -huh. and receive continuous blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some grace. But we're this is not the will of the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he can't go against himself. Mm -hmm. Why or when is it necessary to sow a financial seed? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse number 21. And Aruna said, Wherefore is my Lord the king come to his servant? Go to the B cause. And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, to build an altar to the Lord, so that the plague may be stayed from the people, from the people. Jesus. so that it could be held back right, right. from the people. Uh -huh. God often encourages us to offer him spiritual and financial mm -hmm. sacrifices. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want you to key in on the word sacrifice. sacrifice. We have to sacrifice some things as evidence that he's reconciling himself, reconciling us back to him. Yes, so we yes. see David attempt to go out and make a purchase of the ground that he's going to use to build an altar and burn the sacrifice. And, and symbolically, as well as metaphorically, that ground where you're burning the sacrifice won't be good for crops. Uh -huh. So remember back then in the antediluvian days, uh, the Bible days, they had a barter society. They didn't have cash. Right. They had a few shekels, but most folks dealt with barter. Mm -hmm. I'll trade you some barley, you give me some corn. Right. <laughs> you give me some wheat, I'll give you some straw. Uh -huh. When you burn a sacrifice, that spot can't do anything else as it relates to the commerce system. Mm -hmm. It was a sacrificial place. Right. That's why some of these places were called holy ground uh -huh. or a special place. Uh -huh. You know, and so here David is understanding that God hates the robbery of burnt offerings. Right, right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you're going to use the ground for a burnt offering, go ahead and pay for it. Uh, hello. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Verse 25 says, And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Uh -huh. So the Lord was entreated for the land. Yes, and the plague yes. was stayed from uh -huh. Israel. Jesus. David gave a sacrifice mm -hmm. similar to what we saw with Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Remember, one of them gave a good sacrifice and mm -hmm. one of them just gave them some leftovers. Mm -hmm. If you give God leftovers, he doesn't look at that as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to do more than just say, Lord, help me. Right. Sometimes you got to put your money where your mouth is. On, Sometimes you got to put your time where your mouth is. Yes. Sometimes you got to put your heart where your mouth is. Yes. If the Spirit of God yes. speaks Glory to us, us then we must be willing to sow a seed. There's yes. many times God has commanded us or gave us a holy nudge to, and through an unction in His Spirit, by His Spirit, for His Spirit, with His Spirit, on the inside of us to touch our spirits where we're supposed to give. Give up your time. Give up your efforts. Yeah. Give up your love. Yeah. Give up your mercy. Give up your grace. And sometimes, give up that mucho dinero. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me some of those greenbacks. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Give something that matters. If it matters to you, then it matters to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He don't need your money. My God. Think about that. Mm -hmm. If he needed your money, he could have kept it for himself. Mm -hmm. Right. And it never would have touched your hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to understand the value of planting a seed, sowing a seed for your breakthrough. That's yeah. why anybody who can really teach about seed time and harvest and, and giving and the ministry of, of, of money, they always say, you name your seed. Name your seed. Why would you name your seed if it was only money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you name your seed healing. Yeah. When you're looking for a healing. Uh -huh. You name your seed husband. Yeah. When you're looking for a husband. You name your seed wifey. Yeah. If you're looking for a wife. Uh -huh. You name your seed new job. If you're looking for a new job. Uh -huh. You name your seed house. 
if you're looking for a house. You name your seed uncommon faith. If you got some uncommon faith that God is going to do something that he's never yes. done. You yes. name your seed Amen. deliverance. Amen. If yes. you're looking to be delivered from something. Yes. You yes. name your God. seed Hallelujah. breakthrough. Breakthrough. If you're stuck in the rut like Chuck up the creek without a paddle and don't know what to do. You're at your wits end. Your back is up against the wall and you don't have a clue what's next. You name your seed for the same thing that you are looking for from God. That's why the Bible says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Hallelujah. Pastor, when you just said all that, I wrote down, invest in what you need. Hey. Invest in what you need. Yes. A lot of times people who start a business, how many know you got to give out more before you start getting more in? That's right. And you got to learn how to invest in yourself. That's you know, right. and, and the way you invest in yourself, and now I'm picking back over pastor, is that you name your seed. When you give, you name your seed. I am a giver. I believe in giving into ministries, and I believe in giving as the Lord leads me to give. We were at a church one time, and they were asking for $500. And me and Pastor, we both looked at each other and said, let's give it. That's we right. We just stop and say, look at us like, I don't think he has no. The I, spirit of the Lord was so heavy. There was no church, hesitation. And there was no hesitation yeah. because we had some needs. We had some needs. And we said, Lord, we're going to give this to you. And we wrote them a $500 check. And the Lord blessed us tremendously. We again had a need a couple of months back. The Lord said, give $1,000 to this ministry. And, and, there was, and there was no hesitation. There was no hesitation. And I tell you, it's this, been this time, time, though. But this time, Woo! <laughs> did he triple it? He tripled it, I think. He he tripled it. Then I don't I don't know what the next number is. Yeah, I'm just telling you, saying, he blew our mind. I'm telling you, God will yeah. bless you. And so I'm not saying this to be bragging. He, he blessed us when we thought he was full blessing. Right. And then there's the time. So For that moment, don't get it twisted because there was a times when you you ask God, Lord. I've been given faithfully. I give my tithes. I give my offering, God. When is my time going to come? When are you going to bless us, God? When you see that our needs, God, you know. But but those are the times when you have to remember, I believe it's Philippians 4 and 16, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. His riches glory. glory. Not, 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 not my thoughts. And then yeah. and then you got to go back over to Isaiah when he said, my ways are above your ways. Higher than your ways. And Isaiah my thoughts 55. are higher than your thoughts. And that's the thing that we have to understand that God, God don't think like us. And we can't, and, and our problem, let me tell you what our problem is, saying. Our Go problem is, is that we try to make God come down to our level. And we try to talk to him like, Lord, will you see? No, 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 no. No, no, you got to leave him where he's Don't at and praise him. And you get up there to where he's at, glory to God. And the way you get up to where he's at is that you got to keep worshiping. You got to keep believing God. You got to keep trusting God because Abraham, he hoped against hope. When you know, when you don't have no hope and when you're desperate, you, 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 you don't have nothing but hope, right? Because the Bible said, the Bible even says that if you can see the hope, then you don't have hope. That's right. That's not hope. But hope is when you can't see nothing. You don't know what's, where, where, where your ends is going to be. You don't know how. You need a miracle, yeah. basically. And you wait on God for God to give you that miracle. And that's why the old saints would say, you know, I waited on God. I trusted oh, yeah. God. I kept praying. I kept talking to God. I kept being an example to God. And that's what God is calling us to be. And it's almost like Bishop Jake, one of his messages that I love, can you stand to be blessed? Yeah. Because a lot of times the blessing is not going to come to you can prove that you can stand. That's right. That's right. Invest in what you need. Hallelujah. Sowing the seed is not required every time you have a problem. I, I want right, you to get right. this. But there are many times in the Bible where we read it where God required that a seed be sown. He even established the configuration of tithes and offerings all the way back in Genesis. Uh -huh. But you got to go back and read about it. Uh -huh. You know, there was a war, and then at the end of the war, they gave tithes of all. Yes. I mean, the, the Bible clearly shows us what we need and how we need to go about getting it. That's why it's called the B-I-B-L-E, yes. Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Yes. That means if I follow these instructions, mm -hmm. I'm going to make it. Yes, yes. I'm going to be all right. Uh -huh. But sowing seeds and giving tithes and offerings is contradictory to some people uh -huh. and controversial to those who refuse to sow financial seeds. Uh -huh. And the first thing they think about when they don't have any money uh -huh. is, I should have, I would have, uh -huh. I could have yeah. sown a seed. Yeah. 
Yeah. But you didn't. Right. Hallelujah. And so if you put a name on your seed, guess what you're going to receive? Uh -huh. That which you name your seed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how can you expect God to do his part uh -huh. if we don't do our part? Amen. <laughs> We're going to deal with question number three, final question of the night. What is the ultimate requirement to overcome discontentment? But let's first define what discontentment is. Discontentment is a lack of satisfaction in one's possessions, your state, or your situation. Ultimately, discontentment has many causes. Uh -huh. Okay, that's where it comes from trying to meet your wants instead of your needs. All right. We have this old saying that you say you're out there, you you, you buy what you want and beg for what you need. You know. I got it. But understand, this is a temporary nature in this life uh -huh. but it brings along with it dissatisfaction it brings along with it fear it brings along with it disappointment even in and of ourselves right and and it also brings about loneliness uh -huh. because uh -huh. loneliness has a has a lot of pieces and parts to it but it stems from discontentment discontentment is when you just never ever satisfied it's, it's called being insatiable right. nothing satisfies you I've seen women, and this is no knock on anybody. She has blue eyes today, green eyes on Tuesday, brown eyes on Thursday, and sometimes you don't know if the hair is going to be blonde or brunette. All right. Underneath is black, right. but but I don't know. You know, it's like it's confusing. I, I'm not against you fixing yourself up, but but some change is excessive. Amen. But some of it comes from discontentment. How do we deal with discontentment? First of all, you got to change your attitude and your perspective about the things that you go through in life. Right. Begin to appreciate what you have. Uh -huh. All you got to do is stop for a moment right. and, and look around. You're already blessed. Many yeah. times, discontentment comes from having to wait on God. Uh -huh. The Bible says in Psalms 27 and 14, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And sometimes waiting does not mean sitting still. And I know that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, but you got to be willing to move your feet. Amen? Amen. Waiting does not mean sitting still. There's an old saying that says, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Always on time. I like to say it this way because I'm from the new school. I feel like my clock doesn't always line up with God. So I say he may not come when you want him, uh -huh. but you're going to want him when he comes. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> I don't like some of God's time. And I'm just, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to keep it real. We keep it 100 in here. Right, right. I just, we, I, I'm serious. It's, it seems like God's clock it's got a slow hand on it or something. You know, does he need to put another battery in it? You know, is it unplugged? You know, did, did he forget about me? <laughs> and sometimes Ooh, you have Jesus. to, whoo, you got to be reminded that my file is still on God's desk. Yes, That's yes. why the Bible says, he said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And he yes. tells you over in Jeremiah 29 and 11, mm -hmm. that the thoughts that I have for you. Yes. Thoughts of peace. Are not thoughts of evil. peace. Mm -hmm. Not of evil. Give you an expected end. Mm -hmm. And he gives you personalized instructions in Joshua 1 and 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yes. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Yes. Then yes. thou shalt have good success. Every blessing of the Lord comes yes. attached to something. Yes. He loves us unconditionally, yes. but every one of his blessings yes. is attached to a condition. You got to pass the test uh -huh. to get to the other side. And many times, ooh, I feel it now. Many times when you ask God for something, uh -huh. the first thing he does is he trains you with trouble. Uh -huh. I'm training you with trouble to see how you're going to act on the other side of the trouble. Uh -huh. If you have the spiritual, good God Almighty, capacity uh -huh. to receive what you just asked for. Come on. 